I would like to thank the, the organizers uh, for inviting me to speak in this beautiful place again. Um, so uh, concurrency theory is a part of, uh, is a part of uh, computer science that uh, deals with uh, uh, properties of uh, systems in which uh, several computations uh, run uh, simultaneously and uh, sometimes uh, interacting with each other. There are many models uh, for this, uh, uh, for this uh, concurrency uh, uh, concurrency uh, uh, situations. Uh, I will talk about a, a very specific one which is uh, called the PV model of uh, Dijkstra. Um, even, even this uh, will uh, we'll talk, uh, will just uh, describe a very uh, special case of this uh, model. Um, nevertheless, this model has uh, some uh, topological uh, connections uh, and uh, we'll <coughs> outline these uh, connections with direct topology and uh, subspace uh, arrangements and um, uh, present some applications. This is a joint work with, uh, with uh, Martin. Uh, Martin has done uh, a substantial and uh, a very fundamental work in the area and uh, I'm uh, just uh, and, uh, yeah, a hitchhiker. Uh, but uh, in any case, let, let us... Uh, Oh, let us see. Uh, yeah, sorry. Right. Uh, yeah, okay, so, so this is the outline. First, we'll describe a uh, Dijkstra PV model. Uh, it has some ingredients, say, say the resources, the processes, the executions, and we'll see how this translates into the language of directed topology and the uh, path spaces will then uh, consider very specific uh, type of uh, PV programs, uh, which we call uh, instantaneous programs. Uh, we can analyze these uh, programs or the spaces that correspond to these programs uh, using uh, subspace arrangements, and the main result will be really a kind of expression, more or less explicit, uh, of the Poincaré series of the path and space associated to instantaneous programs. Uh, finally, we'll uh, present some applications uh, to special uh, path spaces and to connectivity questions and uh, present some open problems. So, uh, okay. So first, uh, what is a Dijkstra PV model? Again, I'm uh, somewhat uh, restricting uh, my attention to a special uh, case of uh, Dijkstra model. So it has variables, which are the resources. It's uh, represented by a finite set, and these could be the resources, could be some computers in a distributing uh, computing systems or shared memories and things like that. And there is a capacity, which is a positive integer associated with every resource, which tell us how many uh, processes can use it in the same time. So, okay, so these are the uh, these are the components of the model. Now, uh, what are the processes? So the processes are uh, just a, a sequence. A process is a sequence of uh, requests uh, of, of the user to use some of the resources. And uh, PV indicates the access or the locking of a resource, and the VA uh, is the releasing or the unlocking of a certain resource, and the PNV are, uh, are uh, just uh, some uh, shortening for uh, words in, uh, in Dutch, which I actually couldn't find out what they were. You know, there are several versions of this. Maybe there is a Dutch, a local Dutch in the community that can tell us what exactly they are. In any case, these are processes, and uh, one example of a process is, say, T, you uh, lock A, you lock B, you release A, you lock C, you release C, and you release B. Okay? Very well. Uh, okay, so here is an example. <coughs> oh, sorry. Oh. So what is a PV program? A PV uh, program is just a, a, an n tuple of processes, and there is an execution which is a time schedule for carrying all the actions that are required by the, these processes. And the 
time, time schedule should satisfy the following. First of all, it should respect the order in each of the TIs. And secondly, it should respect the capacity constraint. So we shouldn't use a, a constraint, a, we shouldn't use a, a, some a resource a, more than its constraint. So here is an example. We have A and B as the resources with capacities 1, and we have these uh, two, uh, two uh, processes, so, and we uh, line them uh, according to time. Time goes, flows in this direction. And here is a legal execution. So we first uh, uh, access A, T1 access A, then access B, release B, and releases A, and T2, after a uh, T1 releases B, then T2 uh, accesses uh, B, and uh, then, after, uh, then after a while it will, uh, accesses what A, releases A, and releases B. So here is an example of a legal execution, and uh, here is a, a, an example of illegal execution. This is illegal because at this time point, uh, X, uh, the resource B was accessed twice. This is illegal. Oh. Fine. Uh, now we will encode these, uh, these uh, processes or these uh, programs uh, topologically as follows. We'll actually, what we'll do, we'll recall the time schedule of each, uh, of each uh, process. And this is done uh, in what's called the pass spaces. And so let me <coughs> spend a few minutes talking about pass spaces in general. So suppose that we have a subspace of Rn, any, any subspace, and uh, we take two points in its uh, uh, closure, which are ordered according to a, a component-wise uh, order. So all the components of Y0 are, uh, are less than the components of Y1. And a directed path is just a path from uh, 0, 1 to, from time to uh, the closure of x that is non-decreasing in every coordinate. It goes like this. And the path space consists of all, okay, sorry. The path space consists of all paths that begin at y0 and end at y1. And the topology is just a standard uh, compact open topology. And now the question is, what kind of topological space do we get? And it depends, of course, on, the, on, the, on x. It can be very complicated. Actually, it can be anything. Uh, at least uh, the homotopy type can be realized. Any homotopy type can be realized. This is a, a, a result of uh, Zielinski. Um, let's look at it, this example. We take out of R3, this, the point 1, 1, 1, and we consider all the paths from 0, 0, 0 to, uh, say, 2, 2, 2, then one can, uh, one can think about it for a, for a minute and see that actually the path space is uh, homotopy equivalent to S1. Uh, here, here is a, well, here is how S1 parameterizes a homotopy model of uh, this path space. You take all the paths which uh, go through this, uh, that uh, goes directly to a point on this circle and continue from 0, 0, 0 and continue to uh, 2, 2, 2 and it turns out that this is actually uh, this, <coughs> this space of paths is homotopy equivalent to the total space. Okay. Uh, Now, uh, to, to make things formal, uh, we'll have to uh, we'll encode the processes as partitions. So suppose that, uh, I'll, I'll just uh, skip this uh, formal definition, suppose that we have a process, so PA, PB, VA, and so on, then we look at the, <coughs> look at the points in time when we uh, access and release a certain resource. So, for example, A is accessed at point 1 and released at point 3, and so on for B and for C, 2 and 6, and at 4 and 5. Okay? And for each of these pairs, so we think of T as a partition into pairs, and for each of these pairs, we, uh, we indicate which resources resource uh, did we use. 
so uh, in order to in order to uh, describe precisely the path space uh, of the PV model, we will need these uh, notions, these notations. So suppose that we have a PV program and we want to encode it, um, and let k1 to kn denote the length of each program, so the number of uh, accesses or the locks or uh, unlocks that we perform, uh, and we encode it as follows. First, we look at the point in, our, in Rn, and we look at uh, the number, and given a certain uh, resource A, we look at the number of, uh, uh, the number of intervals in each of the coordinates where we use that resource. So, uh, formally, it's the number of i's that such that xi belongs to the interval pv, where pv is a pair in the, uh, in the partition uh, that corresponds to resource A. So, this is the multiplicity of x uh, with respect to A and T. And the allowed zone, so the zone on which we are allowed to take a path, is just all the points all the points in Rn such that the, uh, their multiplicity with respect to all A's is uh, less than, uh, is less than uh, or equal to Ka. Okay, so it's exactly this expression. So, uh, and the path space that uh, is associated to this program, T and K, is just the and the space of all paths from 0 to k plus 1 uh, on, on this uh, xt uh, couple. Okay. Uh, the example is, well, uh, is just a very classical one, which you have seen in every talk. It's, it's actually compulsory, I think, to show this Swiss flag. Uh, and the Swiss flag is compo is, uh, consists of uh, two processes, this PAPBVBVA uh, and PBPAVA and VB with capacities 1. Now, <coughs> the, uh, the forbidden zone is just the, the Swiss flag, uh, namely PB, the interval PBVB cross PBVB on the second coordinate, which gives us this rectangle, and correspondingly uh, PA VA, which is this interval, times PA VA in the second uh, coordinate. And you can see that the path space here is very, very simple. Homotopically, it's just, uh, it's just two points, right? Because either you take the path which goes from 0, 0 to 5, 5, which goes below the cross or above the cross, and the and you can contract everything to any path, you can contract either to this or to this. Okay. And the question in general is uh, how to compute given, given any subset uh, here, the subset of uh, this allow, uh, of uh, forbidden zone, how to compute this, uh, the homotopy type or maybe things which are less precise, say uh, homology or uh, or even connectivity of uh, just uh, this pass space. Uh, okay, now the question is, one question is, what is it good for? Is it really good for something? And uh, for this I had to consult the experts and they tell me that the, the answer is uh, actually mixed. Because there is one part of the answer which is very clear. Uh, this is the role of connectedness. Whether the thing is connected or not is very crucial because if two executions uh, are, uh, are in the same connected component <coughs> of the past space, then people think of it as producing the same, exactly the same result. Because kind of, uh, it's at least intuitively clear, and in any case it's an intuitive question, it's clear that they, they look the same. Right? They just up to some rescaling, they are the same. Now, this is the connectivity, so people in really in computer science really are, are interested uh, uh, honestly in the connectivity. Now, as for higher homotopy, uh, the question is less, uh, the answer is less uh, straightforward. And uh, one answer is that uh, 
There is, in general, some discussion in the community when do we then when to define two concurrent uh, PV programs as equivalent, and <coughs> one can claim that uh, they are equivalent if uh, if the corresponding path spaces are somehow correspond to each other. The question is, what is to correspond to each other? They may there may be just a one-to-one -one correspondence between them, and. One can, one can ask for something uh, stronger, say uh, homotopy equivalence between them, and so on. And now uh, there is a third uh, reason, which I have not, uh, for, uh, yeah, for, for obvious reasons I have not written here, is that they are simply producing uh, these past spaces of uh, programs produce interesting spaces, and we are interested in interesting spaces uh, without connection to the applications, but this is only partially true. Okay, uh, so this is uh, as for justification. Now let's go to the uh, to some uh, some analysis of these test cases. So first of all, there is a remark that you can actually compute the at least theoretically the homotopy type of a test space. How do we do this? This is uh, uh, an algorithm of uh, of Martin Hauser. And it's actually not very difficult to, to, to understand. Suppose that we have these two, uh, uh, these two forbidden zones, and we want to, uh, we want to analyze uh, the past space. Well, you can see that there are actually only uh, three, three discrete pairs, and this is uh, just uh, three uh, discrete space with three points. How do we get it formally? Well, what we do is the following. We take uh, each, of these, uh, each of these boxes, uh, generalized rectangles, and we uh, pull it down to one of the coordinate axes. So one, there are four choices. So down, 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 left, uh, left, <laughs> down. So down, left, uh, left, down, and left, left. And one, one observation is that all, all these I are either empty in this case. So in this case, you cannot get from this point to this point, simply because there is something blocking you. But in all the rest that are not empty, they are contractible, because you can, you can only go this way. And the same here, you can only go this way, and the same here. And <laughs> it turns out that this, any of these, when they are not uh, empty, are contractible, and moreover, they form a good cover. So when you uh, intersect them, you obtain again a contractible space. So we are in a, just in the situation of applying the nerve lemma in its very simplest form. And uh, for example, you take this cover, which consists of this, this, and this, you apply the nerve ne lemma here, you see that uh, actually the intersection of any, uh, any of these, any two of these is empty, so what you get is, uh, is this, is this, uh, the nerve of this cover, which is just a zero uh, wedge, a zero, okay? And this uh, works for any dimension, uh, as long as you have uh, boxes, you project them correctly. I won't go into the technical detail because there is some clever uh, bookkeeping here. But in any case, you can compute at least theoretically uh, the, uh, the homotopy type. But there is a point here. The point here is that you get a something which is uh, huge, which is really enormous, <coughs> uh, simplicial complex. And uh, it's, it's quite infeasible to do it in, even in a very uh, small uh, examples. And the main point of this talk is that we can do it in another way, in, in some restricted model, uh, in a more, yeah, more, more efficient way, so to speak. Okay, um, so we'll talk about this uh, restricted model, which is called instantaneous PV model, PV programs, and instantaneous means that in all these, uh, TV, in all these uh, resource, uh, processes, we, uh, we access and release any resource immediately. So this looks uh, fairly uh, restrictive, and it is fairly restrictive, but nevertheless it gives rise to interesting uh, spaces with interesting uh, homology, and we'll study these uh, instantaneous programs. 
Uh, now, for, for technical reasons, it would be uh, rather than using, uh, than, rather than having the, uh, the forbidden areas uh, as uh, generalized rectangles of boxes, we'll replace them by points. This will not change the homotopy type of the complement, of the pest space of the complement. So, uh, formally speaking, we'll just say uh, we replace the interval PA, VA by a point QA. So this picture turns out to be this picture. And we can see or we can convince ourselves that this does not change actually uh, the situation uh, topologically. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see examples of uh, instantaneous uh, programs. So one, the simplest one perhaps is, is this. You have one resource, A, and each of the, each of the processes just uh, accesses, access it and releases it K, Ki times consequently. So it turns out that the, the uh, <coughs> The best, the allowed area is Rn minus this, uh, this product of discrete points, so the product uh, of just the lattice restricted to uh, 1 to k1 cross mm -hmm. 1 to k2 and so on. And uh, Martin Rouse and uh, Krzysztof Ziemiński, who is here, uh, actually obtain the uh, precise uh, topological information uh, about uh, of, uh, of this space, or rather they computed the, the homology. And it turns out that uh, in dimension two, uh, you can see that there is only beta zero. It's uh, just a disconnected space. I will see this in a minute. In dimension L, there is homology if and only if L is divisible by N minus two. And the Betty number is the product of these uh, binomial coefficients. These binomial coefficients uh, represent the number of, uh, of uh, ascending, uh, uh, ascending paths, uh, uh, piecewise linear paths, between uh, 0 and uh, k, k plus 1, ki plus 1 for in any coordinates, which have exactly m breaking points. Uh, let's see an exa the example at least in dimension two. So here we have uh, uh, x, we have uh, k1 and k243, and uh, each of these paths which goes, which uh, weaves its way <coughs> between the points, uh, gives rise to a distinct component of the uh, of the path space <coughs> of the. Co uh, of the, uh, of the complement of this set of points, so altogether we get beta zero is 35. Okay. Um, okay. We will be interested in uh, generalizing this uh, result uh, to any situation, any uh, instantaneous uh, program, and the formalization is the following. Uh, the formalization is take any subset of uh, 0, 1 to the n. So any, this is called the hypergraph in combinatorial uh, uh, terminology. So you take just any sub <coughs> collection of subsets. We will assume that it's a, a upward close because for, for reasons that you, you'll see in a minute. And um, we take yf, this will be the forbidden zone, to be all points that have integer coordinates exactly in when, <coughs> when i is in f. When i is, so for each f, say the f is uh, 1, 3, 4, then a forbidden zone that is associated to this set 1, 3, 4 will have all points whose coordinates 1, 3, and 4 are integers. Okay. The pattern space will be just uh, Rn minus the union of these uh, of these forbidden uh, forbidden uh, sets, forbidden subspaces, and the path space will be uh, well the path the passes from uh, zero to k plus one in this xf. Uh, for example, the uh, rausen ziaminski uh, complex, the rausen ziaminski space is obtained by taking f to be just the full just the the set 1, 2 to n. This means that here we get 
one set which is consists of uh, just z to the n, all coordinates are, are uh, integers, and the, <coughs> the homology of this space was, as I said, computed by uh, Martin and, uh, and Christoph. And uh, what we'll do here is to, to give a recipe of computing uh, h star for general uh, hypergraph. And uh, the recipe uh, goes, uh, goes through some notions in uh, topological combinatorics, which I'd just like to uh, recall. Uh, most of you know it, but I'll, I'll recall it uh, anyway. Suppose that we have a partially ordered set, post set. Uh, we associate with it the order complex. What is the order complex? Very, very simple constructions. The vertex set is just the vertices or the elements of the ordered set. And the simplices are the chains, the chain ascending uh, chains, so x0 less than x1, less than xk. This gives uh, rise to a simplicial complex. It's actually a very general construction because any, any uh, triangular space is homotopy equivalent to the order complex of its uh, first subdivision. Uh, so it gives us fairly general spaces. Uh, one example that we will need is, uh, is well, we'll need some kind of lattices. So the most, the, the simplest topologically, la, la, topologically simplest lattice is a geometric lattice. What is a geometric lattice? It's a ranked lattice, so any, any point has a rank. And the rank satisfy this, uh, this uh, inequality, the rank, the sum of the ranks, is at least the rank of the uh, of the join plus the rank of the meet. Okay. Now, of course, any lattice has a top and bottom elements, and if we want interesting topology, we have to chop them off. So we we chop them off. We call this L bar. And the classical result of uh, Folkman from the 60s says that for geometric lattices there is only one homology and it's the top homology and then uh, you can actually compute the top homology using uh, what's called the Nebus number of uh, the poset but in any case it has only, only one homology in top dimension uh, one example is the uh, lattice of partitions so you take partitions of M, of the set M into into parts, uh, you order them according to refinement. So, if a partition is is more delicate than the other, then it's say less or, or bigger than the, the other. Then uh, beta i is at the dimension at the top dimension, which is n minus three. It's uh, n minus one factorial, and otherwise it is uh, zero. Okay. Uh, the the lattice that we we'll need will uh, as it happens, will be uh, non-geometric, uh, but uh, it's called the S equal lattice, pi m s, and it, it came to prominence uh, some 20 years ago in work of uh, Lovas, uh, Yao, and uh, Bjornel, and it, <coughs> it contains the partitions of m, such that every part is either of size 1 or of size at least s. So this is called pi m s. This is no longer a, a geometric lattice. It has a rather complicated homology. And <coughs> at least for the, uh, for the Betty numbers, uh, Bjornner and Walker uh, found a, a precise, precise uh, formula. And this is the formula. It's, it, it, in particular, homology happens only in dimensions which are uh, of this type. So it only happens with the uh, jumps of uh, S minus 2. So we'll need this uh, in, the, in the sequence. Uh, OK. Uh, OK. Uh, we will have uh, our, our uh, other complexes that we will use where will be other complexes of matching. So what is a matching? A matching in a hypergraph is just a sub-hypergraph that consists of disjoint uh, sets. So uh, we'll again, uh, again an object that is uh, widely used in combinatorics. We will partial, a partial 
order on the set of matchings uh, by which uh, by uh, as follows uh, by refinement essentially. So we say that the matching G is less than the matching G prime if any G in G is contained in some uh, G prime in G prime. And uh, this gives us a partial order and uh, we, we get posets of matchings by using this uh, partial order. And in particular, we'll be interested in the given a set in the uh, hypergraph. We'll consider all matchings that are <coughs> that such that all their elements are contained in some, you have some set F. We consider all matchings that all of your sets are contained in, in F, but not F itself. And the main point actually of, of, uh, of the what follows is that the homotopy type of this uh, of this space of this uh, path space that uh, corresponds to f is uh, expressed can be expressed in terms of this uh, homo of the homotopy types of this uh, of this uh, uh, order complexes of these posits okay. and we we will explain this this is this not but not exactly uh, true but uh, this is the actually the idea. Okay, uh, so how, how this does this goes about? So here is a, a, well, this is a terrible, we have a two terrible slides in front of us, so bear with me, these are just, I just want to give the definitions, they are, uh, they are ingredients of the formula that, that will follow. Uh, for a function on the, on the hypergraph, an integer function on the hypergraph, we define a graph. The graph will be just take any set in the hypergraph and uh, take m copies of these sets, so mf copies of this set, and connect two pairs fi and f prime i prime if if and only if f and f prime intersect. So we get a graph. Okay. Now, uh, so this graph looks like it's a graph just on the on f itself of the intersection graph of f itself. And you put clicks on each of these clicks of size mf on the set m on the set f. Uh, now, now we look at acyclic orientations of this graph. What is an acyclic orientation? If you have an undirected graph, you can direct the edges, and you can ask, does this contain a cycle? So you can always direct it so it will not contain a cycle. You can just choose a point and just branch from this point outwards. And you can count the number of acyclic orientations. And uh, this is a, an object that has been studied uh, extensively in combinatorics. And actually, there is a, an interesting uh, and, uh, well, one can say cute result of, uh, of uh, Stanley that tells us that the number of acyclic orientations can be computed by substituting minus one in the chromatic polynomial of the graph. Uh, this does not give us a, an efficient algorithm to compute the, the number of the cyclic orientation, but at least it puts it on some, some uh, common grounds or some familiar grounds. Uh, here is one example. We take f to be just uh, 1 to n. So this is the uh, rausen ziaminski example. Uh, n will be m, so we get a complete graph on m vertices, and the number of acyclic orientation is simply m factorial. You decide on the order, and then you direct the edges accordingly. Okay, uh, and now we have two two numbers which uh, can be which can be expressed in terms of the acyclic orientation of these graphs. So this is b f k m. It's well. Let's say that it's just some expression, and we have another expression which depends on n and on the on the uh, underlying uh, hypergraph. And the claim is is this: if we uh, we denote by a z the uh, path space uh, of X f, then the uh, Poincaré uh, series of of this space, of this space space, which is, uh, well, I shift uh, the degrees a little bit so that it will have a nice form. So the dimension of h uh, i minus 1 times t to the i 
uh, with respect to any field is uh, this, uh, this sum. So this sum has some components in it, so it's just sum over all uh, functions on integer functions on f, and there is a power of t, this power of t, and here is the interesting part which is the product of the uh, Poincaré series of the uh, ordered sets of the order complex here, but with uh, t to the minus 1 as the, uh, as the variable. Um, okay, so so this is this is the formula, and uh, on the face of it, it looks uh, it looks cumbersome, and it is cumbersome. But uh, in some special cases, uh, it's very easy to evaluate. Sometimes these are very easy to understand, uh, or at least to understand somewhat, and then we can get uh, we can get the full information concerning uh, the Poincaré series. Uh, okay, so let let me say a few words about how to derive this formula and the idea is, uh, is, is this we, uh, we actually will, uh, will represent, the, uh, represent the complement of the, of the path space uh, as a union of nice sets okay? and this will be done as follows suppose that we have a subset F in our hypergraph and we have a J which, uh, <coughs> which associate to every I in F, it associates a number between 1 and Ki. So it's a, a time point for each I in F, it associates a time point in the interval 1 to Ki. So this is called a partial sequence and we, we, take, we look at the family of all partial sequences. Now a partial sequence uh, Gives rise, uh, gives rise to a to a point in the product of the open simplices d delta k i. This is this denotes open simplex, and let, let let me just give the example rather than going over the definition. Suppose that f is just one two three, and the uh, and the Points in time are for process 1 it's point 2, for process 2 it's point 3, and for process 3 it's point 1. Then this, this set, this subset, consists of all, uh, all points. This is a point of in delta, uh, delta, what, uh, delta 3, delta, uh, delta 3, and delta 3. So this is, this is a point of vectors and the constraint is that this one, this x12 will be equal to x23 will be equal to x31. So what we get is finally to the second half of the title, namely uh, we get to simply a subspace arrangement. So this describes, gives us a subspace arrangement. So this is a subspace inside the uh, inside the process Pro the product of uh, open simplices. So we get GF, uh, GFJ will be just a, we cut through, a, we cut through a product of simplices. And these will be uh, the ingredients that will uh, be used to uh, prove the formula. Now, uh, we will, uh, we will need some homotopy equivalence which will be carried out using a, linear approximation. So here is, a, is, here is a piecewise linear function that is indexed by x0, x1 to xk, which is a point in the open simplex uh, of uh, dimension k. It's <coughs> fpx of 0 is 0, px uh, of 1 is just k plus 1. So it begins at 0 and ends at k plus 1. And then at exactly at the point a xi, it gets the value i, so you get some kind of uh, some kind of piecewise linear uh, function, and uh, given k1 to uh, kn and x in the product of the open simplices, we define a function from i from the zero one interval to rn to be just this uh, just this uh, piecewise linear uh, function. Uh, we will use this piecewise linear function to construct some homotopy equivalence. And 
it is constructed as follows. Uh, we will take uh, we'll take the union of all these GFJs where FJ is in SF. This will be actually our uh, forbidden region. And we take DF to be the complement of the forbidden region. And the claim is that this DF is exactly homotopy equivalent to, uh, to the pass space. And the idea is that we can associate, we can approximate any, any path, uh, decrease, increasing path in XF by, uh, by a piecewise linear function in, uh, in DF. And the association is simply given X in DF, we associate to it the piecewise linear function PX. Now, this, the condition that DF is the complement of EF translate exactly to that, to the fact that this PX avoids the, avoids the uh, forbidden region uh, in XF, so what we call YF, and therefore it turns out that, uh, that this is really a homotopy equivalence, and therefore we have to, what we have to study is the homotopy type of, of this DF, which is actually, a, well, this is just a usual space, no paths are involved here. And, and then the next stage is, uh, is, how to, is how to really understand this, uh, this DF. So, <laughs> it will be easier to talk about the, the, rather than talking about the complement, it will be uh, more convenient to talk about the the constraints. So EF will be the constraints, as you <coughs> as you saw. EF. Sorry. EF was the forbidden region, and we are we are interested in DF. But in order to get some information on DF, we'll use EF. So EF is uh, is actually a contractible space. So we have to compactify it. We compactify it just by by closing this uh, product of simplices, as usual, and uh, we get the one-point compactification of EF, and and we get and the main point is that there is, as promised, a homotopy the composition of of EF EF uh, hat, and this is the homotopy the composition. So it's a, the composition which consists of wedge of many things. And in a specific wedge, there is a wedge of a sphere of some dimension, and a join with uh, some uh, order complexes again with some multiplicities. And uh, and the idea is uh, there are some technical things, and it uses all kind of uh, all kind of uh, tools from uh, combinatorial topology. But the, the main thing is that you decompose EF. As, as the union of these hyper hyperplanes, I, I, hyper uh, well subspaces in this in the product of the simplices, and then uh, you analyze you analyze the intersection of these guys, and you take the intersection posit of this cover of this cover of E F Z, and you use the wedge lemma of, uh, of Ziegler and De Rade with Rade Zivalevich, who is here, uh, and result from the 90s, that uh, tells us that the, this EF is homotopy equivalent to a certain wedge, to a wedge of the order complex of Q, uh, which is the interval Q less than Q, where Q is the intersection poset, uh, join with UQ, which is uh, which is the inter intersection corresponding to Q of the uh, gamma FJ. Now, uh, one has of course to to check that uh, this you can actually does have uh, it's legitimate to use this uh, uh, this uh, uh, this lemma wedge lemma. And uh, the main point uh, later is just to identify the elements here. What, what is this uh, order complex and what is this UQ? UQ turns out to be a sphere of the sphere of high dimension, and this uh, delta uh, Q 
uh, corresponds to some order complex of uh, metrics that appears in the formula. Uh, now, uh, to complete the proof, one uses Alexander duality because what we computed was actually the homotopy type of EF, EF uh, hat. And using Alexander duality, you can compute the homotopy of the complement and, uh, and then Using some uh, standard uh, bookkeeping, uh, what you get is uh, an expression for uh, for the uh, Betty for the Poincaré polynomial of uh, of the uh, pass space as we we stated it. Uh, let, let's see uh, uh, to one one or two applications. Uh, first, let's go back to the Rausen uh, uh, Minsky theorem. So in the Rawson Ziaminski, you just take Rn, you remove all integer points, you want the homotopy type. Well, in this case, f is very simple, as we said, f is just the set n. Now, uh, what is the order complex of all matchings less than n? Well, this is the empty complex. Now, I know that topologist just laughs when we talk about the empty and the void complex, but there is a complex, there is a difference between the complex that contains the empty sets and the complex that does not, is so poor that it doesn't even contain the empty set. This complex does contain the empty set, and when you do the computation, the trivial computation, since there is minus one reduced homology of the empty set, uh, which is non-zero, so h minus 1 tilde of empty set is just uh, 0, OK? Then the Poincaré polynomial is just 1 here. And then when you substitute here, the, what you get is the formula becomes very simple, and it becomes this formula. So the Poincaré <coughs> series becomes just this simple expression, which uh, very luckily is in agreement with uh, the rausen ziaminski uh, result. Uh, a slightly more complicated, uh, let me skip this, uh, a slightly more complicated uh, example is uh, the SK equal pass space. So this, this pass is, this pass space occurs when all the processes call Ki times a single resource, but this time the capacity of this resource is just S minus 1. Okay? Uh, in the rawson ziaminski the capacity was uh, actually uh, the capacity was uh, was uh, was one. Uh, but, but this in this case the capacity is at least uh, is at least s. Now it turns out that if you look at the ingredients of the formula, the uh, matching uh, uh, the matching that uh, complex that. Uh, corresponds to, to, this, uh, to this f is just uh, isomorphic to the to pi, pi complement fs. So, so it's a complex that we actually, or a poset lattice that we actually know, so we can compute, compute its homology uh, using the Bjorn and Welker uh, computation. And we obtain uh, an explicit, but, uh, but it's, it's kind of you remember the bjorn velker formula, it was kind of long, so this becomes even longer, but it's, it can be computed and uh, can, you can say exactly when does it have homology or not. In particular, it has homology only in dimension that uh, are divisible by n minus 2. Um, okay, so let me, let me just uh, skip, uh, skip this and uh, conclude with some open problems. One question is, what happens to the cohomology of uh, pass spaces, even for the, in, in the instantaneous case? Might, might give us some, some interesting uh, result. Uh, another question is whether this, this approach can be used for general uh, PV programs. So there is a problem here, because somehow here, uh, in this case, <coughs> Uh, in contrast with the instantaneous case, in this case we have to use uh, thickening of, uh, of subspaces. So we have to discuss 
thickening of subspace arrangements, which are harder to deal with. And uh, another general question is, what is the complexity of the computing the homology, say, of the best space of PV program? Uh, we know by uh, Rausen's algorithm that it can be computed. Uh, Rausen algorithm is definitely a, a super polynomial. It's actually exponential. The question is, can we, can we show that it must be always uh, exponential? I, I would guess that the answer is yes, but uh, but uh, I don't know a formal proof. And uh, this last important slide is uh, this. Okay. Does uh, anybody have a question? I think I, I have one. Okay. So you have, you, have a, you have this model, this combinatorial model to describe homology of these uh, path spaces for, for processes. For mm -hmm. um, and then you describe the, uh, the Poincaré series, and, and so you can work out some examples or this, they do the homological dimension of these spaces, namely the, the highest dimension where the homology would, would appear. Mm -hmm. Would um, that agree with, a, I guess you have explicit cellular models, uh, simplicial models for these spaces, and with that, the di I'm thinking about the dimension of these models, the, or, or, or more generally, the homotopy dimension of these spaces. These models will give you information about how, what's the dimension of these spaces? Yeah. And cellular see, complexes are... are see, these, these are the dimensions can be, even if you are in a spa in a n dimensional space, so you live in n dimensional space, the, the, the constraints are in n dimensional space, the homology can be Lucky. can go much much higher. Yeah, yeah. So I'm yeah. asking for for for, for an upper bound. Uh, uh, yeah, these these do give an upper bound, but uh, but the upper bound depends on the the reasoning. The reasoning the wedges uh, don't count, but uh, there is an upper bound which depends on the on the homology of the uh, on the homology of the uh, other complexes. And these all the complexes are, are very big because uh, you see it's you the elements there are matchings and matchings can be I mean, uh, can have a, they are simplicial complexes but they are even though they come from an n-dimensional uh, space they, they can be very 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 large uh, I don't I don't think there is a you can a priori give some non, non trivial uh, estimate. Perhaps we can. Okay. okay. Thank you. So let's uh, thank you, the, the speaker again. Thanks.